I'm Father Gray, and this is a St. Mary's Sunday. This Sunday, we hear a particularly pleasant and good and reassuring gospel. Listen to it. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. When we think of the seasons of our life, there are times when we need to hear this, when we need to hear this message that through our faith, we will see the Father. Our Lord tells us that he is the way, the truth, the life, the only way, the only fullness of truth, and the only fullness of eternal life. Now, there are many places set aside for us. This is something that we have in our faith. But we also know that our Lord Jesus Christ has in store for us so many great blessings, so many graces that he's willing to share with us right now. And not just the works that we see, but also the faith that comes from it. Because the works we do not always see we do not always have in mind that fullness of time and the dwelling places that are set for us, for our loved ones, for all of our great human family. Yet, these things are true. We hold them in faith. This faith is a faith that moves us forward from any anxiety, from any place of suffering. Our faith will always be with us. But where does this faith come from? How is it strengthened? What are the proofs that we're always looking for? In a real way, it comes from those people around us, our loved ones, our relatives, and also in a very special way, the church itself. The church, which is the gathering of the people who are believers. In the second reading today, we hear from St. Peter in his letter, Beloved, Come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. 
These phrases are used to describe us, are used to describe you and me, a royal priesthood, a holy people, a people set apart. The Lord is saying these things. This is not what we are saying to each other, but rather we are hearing it through the apostle that we will be strengthened. It's a good reminder that we have great value. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died for us, and it was not because he wanted to give us something that we did not already have a possibility of in ourselves, but rather to secure for himself that which is our life, our happiness, our real benefit in him. Throughout Easter, we celebrate this and always recall that through his resurrection, we also have eternal life, a life that is guaranteed for us, not because we are not worthy, but rather because the Lord has made us and has fashioned us. And this is the process by which we come. Our faith is a precious gift and one that must be strengthened. Today is Mother's Day. In a special way, thank your mothers for what they have given you, which is life. And to you, mothers, thank you for being examples to your children, not just of all the other things that are required for life, but of this most important thing, which is the faith. Let us be thankful on this Sunday for the faith that we have received from the living stones of the church, especially from those people in our life who are our cornerstones, specifically those people who have helped us be grounded and to grow. And a happy Mother's Day to all.